This is Southern Cross News with Joe Palmer. The future of 50 Tasmanian jobs remains unclear following the sale of Murray Goulburn to Canadian dairy giant Saputo. Shareholders voted overwhelmingly in favour of the takeover yesterday, expecting to provide some stability for the turbulent dairy industry. Just six months ago, Murray Goulburn closed three factories, including Tasmania's Edith Creek site sold to Dutch Mill, a move foreshadowing the eventual demise of Australia's farmer-owned dairy giant, shareholders voting overwhelmingly for a Canadian takeover. The farmers have voted about 98% in favour of this offer, which is an overwhelming piece of support. Tasmanian farmers among those voting for the $1.20 per share sale, $420 million across 1,600 farmers nationally, a relationship souring after Murray Goulburn cut milk prices, driving some farmers out of business. There were some suppliers that changed companies uh, that went from one company to the other, but uh, those that have stuck with Murray Goulburn are very happy to have the new company take over. The company was sold for $1.3 billion. A large amount of that was relating to debt, so anything that's left over will be going back to the cooperative uh, farm, farm gate um, producers. Primary Industries Minister at the time of the milk crisis, Jeremy Rockliffe, says it's a foreign investment providing certainty. What the dairy industry want um, is some certainty uh, moving forward, and uh, Murray Goulburn has provided anything but certainty over the course of the last couple of years. Tasmania Smithton factory is part of the asset sale moving into the hands of Saputo on May 1. Around 55 people are employed at the site with their future yet to be secured. This is very early days uh, but it's important that um, there is certainty. Certainty Saputo is likely to deliver as one of Australia's dairy superpowers. They will be competitive with the milk price that's uh, going at the moment. So that, uh, with, with the milk structure in, in Australia at the moment, uh, there's not a lot of difference between the two companies. Jacqueline Robson, Southern Cross News. A Tasmanian coroner has found drugs and alcohol were contributing factors to a fatal crash in Dover four years ago. Ian Rushton was sentenced to 21 months jail for the crash in 2014, which killed 51-year-old Vincent Allen. Coroner Olivia McTaggart confirming in her findings the pair had been consuming beer and cannabis just prior to the incident. Mr Allen died from serious head injuries after being thrown from the vehicle when Mr Rushton lost control on a corner. Mr Rushton was also found to be driving 16 kilometres over the speed limit, an allegation not made during the court proceedings. Coroner McTaggart does not believe the new finding is inconsistent with the indictment. The state government will push forward with its sentencing reforms once Parliament resumes next month. The Legislative Council rejected mandatory sentencing for child sex offenders in the government's last term. New Attorney-General Halise Archer says the legislation will return to the Upper House with no major changes. There was significant public outcry. Uh, a lot of people could not understand why that would be blocked in the upper house the way it was, uh, certainly by Labor. Uh, so uh, let's start afresh, let's listen to the community. Labor's four members say the party's opposition to mandatory sentencing hasn't changed. Last year the bill was narrowly defeated seven votes to six. Clear skies have helped draw in another strong crowd to Simmons Plains for the start of the Tasmania Super Sprint. Fans had the chance to get up close to their favourite drivers as they prepared to hit the track. The countdown is over. At Simmons Plains, teams inspect every detail like clockwork before the supercars roar into gear. Holden driver Nick Perkat says he's had mixed results at this track, his most recent 11th last year. We've got new, new engines, we've got new chassis and the ZB Commodore, so I think we're in a little bit better position than this time last year. 60,000 spectators will keep an eye on the action over the three-day event, including hundreds of schoolchildren who were given free entry today. Uh, hopefully a few races, maybe a crash or two, but uh, yeah, just good day of racing. Yeah, hopefully I'll see a crash. I want to see a crash. Others want to catch a glimpse of their heroes, like this Craig Lowndes fan from Oatlands. He knows how to race and he knows a lot about cars. 
Trackside was teeming with rev heads, all showing their colours after a trip up Merchandise Alley. While today was more of a homecoming for former Bathurst champion John Bow, he's here racing in the Touring Car Masters. Last time I raced at this track I think it was 2010 or something and, and it's terrific. I've been coming here since I was a, like a seriously a little kid and it's, I was just talking to Garth Tander about it. it, it is such a tricky track for something that looks simple. I love Simmons Plains, I've had a bit of success down here over the, over the years so uh, it's been a while since we won down here so hopefully we can win this weekend. We'll bring you more of today's racing later in sport. Tom Johnson, Southern Cross News. The state government says its election commitment to employ 250 new teachers by 2024 is on track. Education Minister Jeremy Rockcliffe today saying the majority of recruits will come from the University of Tasmania. The incentives are here and uh, we would welcome teachers uh, teaching in Tasmania um, from further afield uh, but naturally of course uh, where our emphasis is on teaching and our own homegrown teachers in Tasmania. But 250 will absolutely make a, a material difference to the nature of programs that can be put in place in Tasmanian schools. A number of the positions will be allocated to regional Tasmania and to also fill new Year 11 and 12 classes in state schools. The RACT is calling on the federal government to allocate $1.4 billion to upgrade Tasmanian roads when it hands down its budget next month. Five projects have been identified as a priority, including upgrading the Bridgewater Bridge, creating a 10-year plan for the Bass Highway and increasing traffic flow on the eastern approach to the Hobart CBD, as well as a safety upgrade for the Brooker Highway onto Domain Highway and improving traffic merging at the Sandfly and Hewan Highway intersection. In recent years we haven't seen any significant funding for Tasmania except for the Midlands Highway work that's, that's being undertaken at the moment. So uh, we were looking for new funding, new commitments uh, that we haven't seen in recent years. The RACT says these upgrades are vital for motorist safety and improving traffic flow. The Launceston City Council is asking the public to get their creative juices flowing and help name the new North Bank Park redevelopment. Works are currently underway for the $9 million project, but a name has so far not been secured. Mayor Albert Van Zetten explained the brainstorming challenge to students from Trevallon Primary today who were eager to share their ideas. The area has been referred to as North Bank for some time, but a North Bank street already exists in the area, so a new name is needed. Submissions can be made on the Council's website until May 4th, with the winner taking home bragging rights and a cool $500. Well, it will be a tough task, but a group of 40 passionate Tasmanians say they have what it takes to continuously sweat it out on a rowing machine for 24 hours. The event is aiming to raise funds for Lend a Hand to Hugo, a not-for-profit charity helping children with autism. 24 hours. That's 1,440 long minutes rowing on this. Former Tasmanian and Australian cricketer Xavier Doherty was keen to give it a go. I used to hate the gym, so this is the first time I've been to the gym since I retired uh, and probably the last for a while as well, so uh, I'll just get on there and wing it and, and see how we go. Hopefully the body holds up. He was one of the first to strap in and set the pace for the charity row alongside the Premier. Participants will give it their all in half-hour stints, no doubt feeling every minute of it. Yeah, so it's a pretty long time to spend half hour or so on the rower. So we've got it on level one, so it is nice and easy. It's not a matter of going quick or anything. We just want the rower moving, but yeah, it should be a challenge. And that is the ultimate goal, to keep the machine in motion until 3pm tomorrow. All money raised will go to Lend a Hand for Hugo, a not-for-profit charity aiming to provide the best possible therapy tools and learning resources for children on the autism spectrum. They do such a great job, it's easy for me to put my hand up and just invest half an hour to, to help out. One in 100 people are affected, so just about every person you know has had some sort of encounter with autism, so the more people that know about it, the better. Jessica Moran, Southern Cross News.
That's the day's business and finance news with thanks to TASPLAN, your local super fund. The Australian share market has closed flat after a choppy session dominated by US President Donald Trump's threat to slap even more trade tariffs on China. The ASX 200 index has dropped by 0.1 points. A short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 76.69 US cents and 62.68 euro cents. To TSL and the Kingborough Tigers are preparing for an initiation by fire tomorrow when they travel north to take on flag favourites, the Bombers, while Launceston will look to bounce back from a disappointing performance in round one, taking on a young and inexperienced North Hobart outfit. The Tigers made easy work of the Ds in round one, but they'll face a whole other beast entirely at Utah Stadium tomorrow. I think it's good to uh, be able to get away on the bus and bond a little bit more and um, just go up in an environment where no one's expecting much of us and um, see what we can do. With the reigning Premiers boasting a potent midfield, first touch will be key to avoiding a whitewash, while the Tigers will see if its small forward line can stand up against one of the competition's strongest back lines. Trying to play our brand firstly. If you start worrying too much about the opposition, and you know, North Line is an opposition that you can probably do your own head in worrying about a little bit too much. The Blues saw firsthand what the Bombers are capable of last weekend. It was a big build-up. It's been a big hype of, of uh, recruits coming to the football club over the last three or four months, and, and it's a bit of a reality check as to now the hard work continues to, to actually perform on the game and, and under pressure. Build as one of the sides to beat this season, Launceston will look to show that the hype is justified against a club still finding its feet in the competition. I think for us now it's just about getting back to what we need to do. Uh, so it's a good opportunity to play against a side that's developing and, and I'm sure they'll be enthusiastic and, and bringing their best foot to, to Windsor Parks. And having performed well at the ground in the past, the D's coach insists his young squad won't be bullied by the Blues' bigger bodies. We've got to go out there fully prepared and lock down on their key players and give a good account of ourselves. The new qualifying format at Simmons Plains has delivered plenty of high-intensity racing in the Supercar Championship. Jamie Wincup clocked a new course record in practice today, but the heat is on for Nick Perkat and Chaz Mostert, who slipped down the order. With a golden ticket to tomorrow's qualifying on the line, drivers were going for broke. Oh, that was wild. The new qualifying format means these practice runs matter. The top 10 fastest drivers leapfrog a round of qualifying, leaving those ranked lower to fight out an extra round. There was a clear standout in the first practice, Shane Van Gisbergen rounding the track in a scintillating 50.78 seconds, what would be a short-lived supercars lap record. Simona Di Silvestro hit the gravel early in the second practice, forcing a red flag as the Nissan was salvaged. Jack LeBrock locked up, lucky to avoid a T-bone as other cars left the pits, while Nick Perkat found himself in no man's land. How can you do that? It's a long way off course. Before making an SOS in the sand trap at turn four. A dispute over position left Chas Mostert giving James Courtney a bump for good measure, but Courtney had the last laugh, recording a time in the top ten, while Mostert finished near the bottom. Jamie Wincup tried the rally game before shaving even more time off Van Gisbergen's earlier lap record, timing out at 50.5 seconds in the ZB Commodore. And he'd gone to the top, fastest time we've ever seen in a supercar around here. So that's an impressive number. Wincup, David Reynolds and Craig Lowndes, the top three performers ahead of qualifying. Earlier in the day, John Bow took pole position in qualifying for the Touring Car Masters. Can he do it and go to pole? Yes, he can. His Holden Tirana edging out Steve Johnson's Ford Mustang by six one hundredths of a second. Tom Johnson, Southern Cross News. To soccer and Northern Rangers captain Nick Lenau Atkinson is returning to the NPL after serving a two-match suspension. He lines up against Crosstown rivals Launceston City tomorrow afternoon. Both teams are still without a win after two rounds this season. Not being able to be there. Um, I feel like it played a, a part on the team mentally, so I think coming to this game with me back and then also a few other players back from injury, I think we're going to be really positive, really keen, so it should be a good outing for us. So we've got some new players in from Devonport and new imports and it's been uh, really helping the team out, sort of driving us forward and helping everyone else lift. The match is also the first of three legs of the Challenge Cup. And some sad news to finish sport. Hockey Tasmania has made a shock decision not to participate in a revamped Australian Hockey League in the future. With an increase in cost from around $90,000 to $600,000 over the next four years, 
Hockey Tasmania has been unable to secure any external funding to cover the participation costs. The Tassie Tigers have previously won the AHL in 2014, backed up by a bronze medal the following year. Good evening. Bit of a drop from yesterday's 23, but Hobart managed 16 today. Launceston, the top around the state with 21. Burnie, 19. And Devonport, 20. Flinders Island and Low Head, 19 degrees. Smithton reached 18. King Island and Friendly Beaches, 17. Strawn, St Helens and Ooze, 16. Lyre Weenie scrambled to 10. Most temperatures around the autumn average. High clouds streamed over the state today with lower cover over the east, west and also the far south. We have more low cloud over southwest WA while bands of middle and high cloud lie off the Queensland coast. The rest of the continent mostly cloud free. And tomorrow, a high will sit to our north extending over the Tasman Sea, a trough located off the east coast. A cold front moves to be just to our west and the troughs continue over the mainland. Winds west northwesterly increasing to 15 to 25 knots over the south and southwest. Lighter winds over the east and inland. And for tomorrow, as we kick off the weekend, partly cloudy for Hobart, 19 the top. Chance of a shower for Medina, 15 and 17 the high for Oatlands, with a cloudy day in the centre. Partly cloudy for Launceston, 20, 19 for Devonport, bit of cloud for Lyawini and 13. Burnie tomorrow, partly cloudy, 19 the top. 17 for Strawn with a few showers, shower or two for Marawar as well and 18 degrees. St Helens an early shower clearing, 21 the top, 21 for Swansea as well. Partly cloudy for Orford and a top of 20 degrees. On Sunday, rain extending across the state late morning but light over the far north. On Monday, morning showers over the southeast and east before developing over the northwest later. And fine sunny weather for Hobart and Strawn on Tuesday with a shower for the northwest. Sunny and 29 in Adelaide tomorrow, fine for Melbourne and 22. Sunny and warm for Canberra and Sydney but a shower forecast for Brisbane and Cairns. A little cloudy over Hobart and cooling down to 13. Cloudy in Launceston, 16. Devonport, partly cloudy in 14. Big weekend at Simmons Plains. Joe, let's hope it's incident free and the weather's good. Absolutely. Thank you very much for that, Murph. Well, that's all from the team for now. See you a bit later with updates. Bye-bye.